Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a short but sweet review of The Little Pot Boiler by Spike Milligan. This is actually one of many Spike Milligans I've read recently, uh, but the others I read them in the bath, so I didn't tab them out because um, I didn't have my sticky tabs, I was in the bath. And I was reading the ones like this length, you can quite often read these in one sitting in the bath. Dane reads. So uh, I will read you, I guess, the blurb, the closest thing we have to a blurb. I have, what, five tabs to check out, so I'll go through those, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So. Right, Spike Milligan, soldier, poet, and man of letters. Harry Seacombe says he has five of his which have not yet been answered. Came up the hard way. The lift was out of action. His literary genius first saw the dark during the last war when he wrote all over Africa and Europe. To gather his writings together, walls had to be taken down all over the continent and reassembled in a disused banana factory in East Finchley. For 50 agonized years, he labored for three years. Time was when his army pension, a store of dried fruit, was getting perilously low and only stood one foot three inches. Nevertheless, girding his loins with cheap girders, he pressed on, in, off and out. Finally, in the terrible winter of 08, he fell sobbing into the arms of his publishers. We immediately guided Milligan's unconscious hand at the foot of a powerful contract. Hurriedly, we felt in Milligan's pockets. In lieu of money, to our trembling hands come the first faded writing of 50 years ago. The title, The Little Pot Boiler, praise be. A masterpiece had been saved for the nation. Buy now before it's too late. Don't buy it, it's not really worth it. I mean, it's okay. So uh, we have a dedication here, it says One gets few chances of thanking in print people one admires Therefore I would like to dedicate this slim volume to Peter Scott and his companions For their efforts in trying to save the bird and the animal kingdoms from extinction Yeah, he was a vegetarian and animal lover Even though sort of those two don't really actually go to that well together Once you discover what goes into cheese and egg production Hence me being vegan these days Anyway, I'm going to read this out called Once Upon This will give you a good feel for uh, Milligan's prose writing style once upon an unfortunate time, there was a hairy thing called man. Along with him was a hairier thing called animal. Man had a larger brain which made him think he was superior to animals. Some men thought they were superior to men. They became leader men. Leader men said, we have no need to work, we kill animals to eat. So they did. Man increased, animals decreased. Eventually leader men said, there are not enough animals left to eat, we must grow our own food. So man grew food. Now the only animals man had not destroyed were tiny ones like rabbits and mices and these little animals were caught eating some of man's crops. These animals are a menace, they must die. In China they killed all the sparrows. In Australia they killed all the rabbits. Everywhere man killed all wildlife. Soon there was none and all the birds were poisoned. Leader man said, at last we are free of pests. Man's numbers increased. The world became crowded with men. They all had to sleep standing up. One day a leader man saw a new creature eating his crops. The creature's name was starving people. This creature is a menace, said Leader Man. Yeah, sounds about right. We get this very short but sweet poem here that also uh, has an illustration. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. And we get this, um, supposedly William McGonagall, the self-appointed poet laureate and idiot, wrote this. What a sinful thing is the electrified telephone. Such a disgrace her that owned before has never been known. I would rather see those to whom I speak. Otherwise, for all I know, I may be speaking to a freak. And then it says, the tintinabulation of the bells drove Poe insane. He stabbed himself to death with a state-controlled raven. With good reason, the GPO phone bell could be heard three miles away as the crow flies and is the direct cause of deafness among crows today. So yeah, that's about all I wanted to share with you from this one. I will show you, I've got these other ones down here. So I also read A Dustbin of Milligan, uh, The Bedside Milligan, or Read Your Way to Insomnia, and A Book of Bits, or A Bit of a Book by Spike Milligan. I would say all of these, apart from A Dustbin of Milligan, I gave a two out of five to because it was really dustbin-like. Uh, this one I gave probably, this was probably the best, the little pot boiler was the best of the lot, so I gave a 3.5 out of 5 to it. The rest I gave 3 out of 5s to, they were okay. Um, but it was nice to continue my mission to read all of Spike Milligan's stuff. These were, as I see, each one of these, I read each one of these in a single bath, you know, so they're pretty good for that, or if you want to start and finish an entire book before bed, you know. Um, so that's about the best I can say of them, but I will be reading more Spike Milligan, he's one of those authors I eventually plan to tick everything off that he wrote. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Little Pot Boiler by Spike Milligan. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you've read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.